YouTube, welcome back to Bad, Bad to, to the, the Stone. Stone. Today, Pebbles is gonna get a little bit of work done inside the back end and try to make it a little bit better for Sophie. You gonna say hi, Sophie? Probably not. <laughs> oh, she gave me a kiss, so she's good. There you go, she said hello. So we're not gonna do the rear seat delete, but we are gonna try to level it out a little bit back here yep. and fill in some of the holes, because right now it's a, it's a little treacherous for Sophie back there. Between the seats, it's a little bit bumpy, a little bit uneven, so we're gonna work on leveling it out. She'll be really comfy and have lots of room to sit, lay down, stand, and not worry about slipping through the cracks, like you said. Absolutely. And even when we have the top off, we'll make sure good area back there because she's going to come on some adventures with us, aren't you, Sophie? Yes. <laughs> All right. Sophie's about an eight-year-old soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. Yeah. I know she kind of looks like a doodle, but she's actually a Wheaton Terrier is what we've got going on here. All right. Let me get a little bit of a close-up of what's in the back, and you can see what we're talking about by some of these rough and bumpy spots. Then we'll talk through what we're going to do. I mean, I've got pretty small parts list for this one. It's just one two-by-four, two-foot-by-four-foot sheet of half inch plywood and then we got one of those three quarter inch thick rubber stall mats from tractor supply so that's pretty much what we've got going on just going to do a little two by four plywood frame to fill in the back area and then not going to put even a full piece of wood over top just that rubber mat is going to fill over the gaps in between so we'll kind of use some cardboard stencil around the edges get ourselves a good template cut that rubber mat and should go fairly quick she'll be good to go all right let's take a close up in there all right Sophie and I will jump out all right, so here's what it looks like in there to start with. And you can see that just even between the seats, even if you had the seats down to try to have the dog here in the back, you've got big holes there, big holes up around that front edge. So just didn't think that would be great for her to be back here riding in. That front area up in there, not quite sure how we're gonna fill that in. That may just end up being open. The rubber will kind of hang over the edge a little bit, but I don't know that we're gonna fill that in completely. But I think as long as we get this middle section and back, I think that'll be filled in close enough for what Sophie needs. Build a little platform back here to level off this back area. Just get it so that it's up to the same height as the seats right here. And then we're gonna put a heavy rubber mat all the way across so that it basically full width, fill in all these holes in between, level all the way to the back. And that way our dog Sophie's got a nice level place to be. So we're not doing the rear seat delete. We're gonna leave the rear seats in there. The heavy mat I'll show you here in a little bit, but I got it from Tractor Supply. It's what they use for horse stalls out in parking lots. Almost one inch thick rubber, but it still has enough flex that if we needed to, we could still fold it up like a taco back here, get the seats to stand up and we could still get somebody in. But ideally, if you wanted to haul passengers, you would take the heavy rubber mat out at home and then the, just the platform could stay in here. So just gonna do a wooden platform. I'm gonna do four two by fours. Three of them are 18 inches. One at the end, a couple here in the middle. On this end, we're only gonna go 16 and three quarters. And then I'm gonna get some cardboard and trace the design of what we need and then trace around this bump that's on the back door because it's gotta go in a little bit right there. And then we'll just use a jigsaw, cut out our piece of plywood, use a knife to cut the piece of rubber and get a nice flat deck going on back here. Step one, let's go cut our four two by fours and get those going. I've also got a router table set up. We'll make sure we round off all the edges and then gonna spray this wooden platform down with with the stuff you spray into bed liner. It's gonna be kind of a rubberized coating on it in black so it should match everything else. So the height actually works out perfect. It's four inches to get pretty much to the top of the seats. So that is a three and a half inch two by four plus a half inch piece of plywood. That's how we're gonna get our four inch platform back here. So pretty easy, two by four standing on edge, half inch birch plywood on top and then big heavy rubber mat over everything. So let's head over to the saw and let's go get our two by fours cut. All right, we got three 18s, a 16 and three quarter. That should be it. Now let's work on some tracing cardboard. Let's go see if we can't get a nice design layout for that back in there.
there's the basic working design right there. We'll run these over, we'll sand them up and clean them up here, round off all these edges on the router before we assemble it. But next up is start getting some cardboard cut out so we can get a good idea what shape we need in there. First, I just marked where those headrests are so I could really get that cardboard tucked up into the place where I wanted it to before I started tracing all around it. Couple quick measurements, couple of big cuts just to get the cardboard out of the way to get it close enough to trace around. And I think we're just about ready. All right, just needed to get it in there close enough. I can go around with my tracing tool. Just took a piece of scrap aluminum, little felt tip on the end. I know I hear that this uh, plastic likes to scratch really easy. And then just holds a Sharpie up in this end. So we're just gonna go along, trace all the way down this edge, and that should give us a pretty good edge for what we need. We'll come do the same thing on the other edge, get both pieces in there together, and then we'll tape some cardboard across to hold it where it needs to be, and we should have a pretty decent template. All right, a little tough figuring out that sharp bend back in there. I think I've got the line that I want. Let's go try it out. Yeah, the fit was looking decent. Just needed to get in there and mark up a couple of spots on that curve, get that adjusted a little better. Okay, I think that's giving us a pretty nice fit on that side. Add our two inches back in up there. Yeah, just a little bit. I cut a little bit too much out of that corner second time around, so we'll fix that up. But there we go. We've got one side done. Let's trace out our other side, and then we'll figure out where we need to be here at the back. It's honestly pretty close. I think I'll use that as a start. All right, so I used that first side flipped over to trace and then cut out the second side. Got that one set up there in place and then just jumped up inside, marked out for that headrest, make sure I knew exactly where I needed to cut out for that headrest and just about ready to get in here and tape these two pieces together. Just a little bit of cleanup here on that one edge. So with the two halves done, we'll get both of those laid up here in place, get this marked off for length, and then find a big piece of cardboard to connect our two halves together, get those all taped up. So we've got one giant template, and now we should have what we need to start working from to make our individual pieces. Yeah, connect our marks up on here and get this whole thing cut to length. and mark off how much of this will represent our piece of plywood for the back. All right, this represents our piece of plywood behind the seats. That represents what's going over top of the seats. So right now I need to trace out a piece just like this. We can set it down in there low, close the door, and then trace around that front edge. So let me go find another piece of cardboard to lay underneath this. Oh. I've got my mark for the back. Now I can trace around the whole front of this piece. That should be what I need for the plywood. And then we'll put it in there, close the door and knock out that edge. And when I cut with the knife, I need to make sure I stay inside this line. All right, so now we're going to close the door and trace our where I need to around that piece. And that's it. Little notch out of the back. 
All right, so we'll get this cut out and then I think we're ready to start tracing onto our piece of plywood and get that cut out next. But it's dark, you ready for dinner? Sure. Let's take a break. See you tomorrow. All right, we are back at it. Nice, bright, sunny day. Only a high of about 75, so good day for working outside today. We left off, we got our cardboard all cut for our template, and now it's time to get in here and cut out our piece of half-inch birch plywood for the top. Get that screwed onto our two by fours, or actually once I get it cut, we'll round off all the edges, get all our pieces of wood looking pretty, get those screwed together, and we'll get some paint on them. While our paint is drying, we'll start dealing with cutting that big, heavy rubber mat to go on top. So we got a nice good square back edge. So we're just gonna pretty much curved around the side. I think I've got a straight edge. We'll clamp on there to make that nice cut across the front. And after we get that done, we'll take the jigsaw around the edges and get those laid out. There we go, that should be our design. All right, let me go grab a straight edge. Be able to make that cut with the skill saw. All right, now I'm gonna stay well inside of my line. I don't want a super tight fit in there. I mean, if I've got a even a quarter inch gap down each side, that'd be fine. The rubber mat's gonna fit in there. So I don't want it super tight wedging it down every time I have to put it in, because you kind of have to tip it. Since everything's wider at the back, you can't slide it in. Anyway, I'm gonna stay well within the line. That should give me about an eighth of an inch on this side, an eighth on the other side. Should give me some good clearance in there. I would say we've got about that quarter inch or so space that we were looking for, so it's not too tight. All right, let's get that over to the router table, round off all these edges. All right, I've just got a one eighth rounding bit in there. I'm just gonna go round off all the edges, the ends of those two by fours, All right, forgot, I wanna go around these corners off first. Yeah, we'll just do that with the sander. We'll go clean up those edges and everything with a little orbit sander here. We should be ready for assembly, and then we can get this thing over and get some paint on it and get it starting to dry. All right, I'm not gonna get too crazy with making sure these are perfectly square. We're just gonna use our floor mat here and get them close enough. Just about an inch and a half. Same thing over there, just about an inch and a half. That's good. All right, these ones, they kind of push up against the mat on the front edge. I think that is good enough. Let's get it in there, get it squared up on the front, drop a couple screws in. We'll pull it out, screw it together the rest of the way, get some primer. Make sure you line it up how you like. Be sure to check the clearance on the left side and the right side to get that as even as you can. Use the tape for straight lines and to space my holes out evenly on each board. Let's 
straight edge on the front to keep it even. All right, it's built, it's in there. We'll drop a couple more screws, but the big moment of truth, can we still get it out of there? It is definitely nice and solid. Feels awesome. And no problem, we can get it out. Broke a screw in there, well that kind of sucks. I'm glad I'm painting over it, but wow, that's unfortunate. I guess I need to get the countersink and countersink these heads or else I'm just gonna keep popping them. Drills have something to keep you from breaking screws. You'd think I'd have turned that on sooner. All right, so I did not have any wood filler or putty handy and decided that, oh, I can figure something out instead of driving to Home Depot to pick some up. Tried using some white glue and some sawdust and it filled in the holes. You'll see it after it's painted, but definitely would have been worth the trip to go get what I needed to make this look a little bit better. I would say that is the, uh, one thing I would definitely go back and do different on this project, but hey, filled the top of the holes, paint's gonna make it look decent, and it will work. Well, we got our platform done, now it's time to move on to this heavy rubber mat. So you can see this stuff's pretty thick. Let's see exactly how thick is it. So it's about three quarters of an inch at the thickest spot. It's about five eighths of actual rubber, eighth inch, got the little feet on the back. So pretty thick and good news. I've used this stuff before, but I've always cut it with a razor knife and it's kind of a lot of work. I tried that jigsaw in there and that is a pretty nice cut edge. So um, works better when it's out in the middle and you can get both of the feet of the jigsaw on there. If you get right on an edge, it does want to be a little bit on an angle, but it still cut it pretty clean. So we are going to be able to use the jigsaw saw to cut this that should significantly speed up this process so i'm going to use a white paint pen lay this out from our cardboard get a nice trace on there and then got some boards we'll kind of block it up a little bit so that i can get it up off the ground and run around with the jigsaw and get this piece of rubber cut after that just painting the platform and we are done all right, we're gonna use our nice square edge back here. And I'm not gonna get the full width of this up there. So just the, the width of the rubber itself, gonna have about two inches or so on either side, but I wanna get that centered up on there as best I can. We'll just have little gaps on the side. These wings from about here on, they weren't supported anyway. So even that last little bit of rubber is gonna sort of fall into a space over there. So no need to extend it any further. That's gonna get us close enough. And kind of cut those two edges, we'll just make sure that we get a nice square line all the way across the top over there. This side I know is pretty good. That side I think is off a little bit. So we'll mark this side and then I'll just make sure I measure from the end. And like I say, we'll get a nice straight cut all the way across there and then just notch it out where we need to for our seats. Yeah, I think I'll flip it over and know where I got to put it for that side. Just a little under two inches. Nice. Yeah, I think that is about as close as I'm gonna get. And then from this end, like 24 and 3 eighths. Yeah, just a little further here, so. Let's see how this thing does. That is cutting like butter with that jigsaw. That is the best thing I've come up with all day today for sure. Cutting out with a razor knife is a long, tedious process. This is just going awesome. All right, 
right, well, I was dreading that as the worst part of the project, ah, and that was not bad at all. All right, it left a little bit on the corners. I think I had a little bit of room in there, so you can always go back and trim those if we need to. Let's see how we did on fit. Our glue is dry enough on here, we can set that on it. Let's see how we did. Because of that wedge shape, we'll sort of fold this up like a taco. Get it most of the way in there. And voila, that is what I'm talking about. I am liking that. Oh yeah, forgot to cut the corner off here. We gotta do that. The door won't close at the moment, so do need to get in there and nip that corner off. So we'll get that piece done. But wow, happy with that fit. Initial test fit is a go. Let me finish this corner and then I'll go in there and get a close up. It's not perfectly level. Could maybe go, I don't know, you could maybe go another quarter inch higher back here. It just, it kind of has a bump from those curves from the seat. Just little high spots, mostly right there on both edges. You could go a little higher at the back and then it's just, you know, gonna dip down further on the front. Just has a bump right there. But this heavy, thick mat, you know, pretty much levels that out. So if you're using it for a cargo area, I think it uh, it pretty much solves that problem. Definitely the dog is gonna be happy back there. Got little spaces up front. You'll see what those look like here when I get in with the small camera and I'll go around the whole edge. But that accomplishes what I was trying to accomplish. You can still, you know, lift this back area up. You can still get underneath without too much trouble to the other car cargo areas. Again, we're going to knock this corner out. That'll make it easier to get around that door latch. So without having to do a full rear seat delete, I think this is a pretty good option to give you a usable cargo area. Still quick access to those rear seats when you need them. Gives you a nice flat look. And this is heavy enough that when we take the top off, this isn't blowing around in the wind. This is definitely um, fully suitable for the top off. Any wind, anything you can throw at it. It's thick rubber, waterproof, so probably most of the water is gonna run out the back if it gets rained on, run down to the front, get down onto the, the washout liner on this Badlands. I like it. All right, let's get this corner fixed and then we can get some better close-up pictures. All right, we saved this piece. Just forgot to trace and cut around. All right, there we got it in there with the door cut out. That is about a perfect fit on the door. So yes, we're good there. All right, so there's the fit around the door. It's got a pretty good gap across the back. Didn't need to fill all that. Again, it's got a little bit of space, make sure water can drain anything else, but nice tight fit where it closes. And we got a good fit up here the rest of the way. Little space left, a couple inches left right here. And you know, that's doesn't have support under it right there, but still solid enough. Same thing on the other side there, but and that's a pretty good usable space. All right, here's a good close up of that fit in there. So there you get a look down the side. Not a bad trace job, worked well enough. And left a little bit around that corner. We got our gap up there on the front, notched out around those headrests so it fits up tight in there. And coming back down this other side. Yeah, I got about a Maybe almost a quarter inch gap on this side, maybe. Enough that it's got a little bit of wiggle room. It's almost tight in a couple places here, but it's got to fit past those seat belts. So again, you don't want to wedge it in there super tight. We've got a nice flat area. Get that platform done in black and it'll just look like it belongs there. Super happy with how that came out. We're ready to get our primer on here. This stuff, you can put another coat on in an hour. So my plan is I'm gonna prime the bottom. I'll spray the bottom with our bed liner, give that another hour to dry, and then I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing on the top. So the whole thing should take about four hours and I should be able to get top and bottom of this done.
All right, we'll come back in an hour and get some black on there. All right, time to get that first coat of black on there. Well, I'm gonna have to go get another can for the top. It used a little more than I thought it would. All right, we got that bottom side dry enough. Time to hit the top side with the primer, get it looking pretty, and then we'll get our last coat of black on there. Back in an hour to get the black on there. All right, last coat, and then this is ready to sit for two or three days, get a good solid cure on this, and then we'll get it installed. All right, we're going for waterproof and protected. More than pretty, I would say we accomplished that. See you back here in a couple of days. We'll do a final test fit, get some pictures of it in there when it's all black, and then we will be ready to wrap up this video for sure. All right, we'll see you back in a bit. Well, there's a quick look at the finished platform all ready to go in there underneath that mat. So I think that that finish turned out pretty good. You can still see the wood grain through it, but it definitely has a little bit of a rough, scratchy texture to it. Should be pretty durable. I think it'll hold up pretty well under there. Maybe one day when I have more time, I'll go back and fill those holes in properly with something to make it look even better. But right now, let's get it underneath the mat and let's get a couple pics of it installed. All right, there it is in there. You can see that that mat has got enough flexibility. You can roll that up out of the way, be able to fold it up, same thing to the back and pop those seats back up if we need to. Hey YouTube, well it's been a little while. We got this back area leveled off, got it all ready for Sophie to go with us on some different adventures. So just thought we'd take a minute and finally wrap up this video and show you how it came together. Right now we don't have the, the mat in, we've got the seats up. And I tell you what, kind of gotten used to this platform. It's nice, you can put things underneath. I found that these Milwaukee pack out trays, they fit pretty much perfect underneath there. I've only got one, but you could put up to three of those in here. That storage underneath has been really nice as a different option for things. What do you think? Oh, I love it. It's uh, pretty handy. So when we have all our things back here, we can just simply grab like our sunscreen or whatever you've placed in here and it's just so organized. Some so. bug spray, some sunscreen, usually some water bottles under there. Keeps them from rolling around, keeps them out of the way. So it's been pretty good. What do you think, Soph? Ah. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and show you real quick. We're gonna put the rubber mat in there and you can see that, you know, even if you need to take some company right away, you can just fold that rubber mat up out of the way, kind of fold it up like a big taco and you can still have the seats up and then we'll show you what that's like with it down and show you how Sophie likes it. So because it's wider at the top, you can't like fold it all the way down, but it tucks up nicely, sort of in there by the roll bar. Definitely lets you put those back seats up. You can haul passengers, even if you had this with you. Honestly, I find it easier if you know you're gonna haul passengers. Just take this rubber mat out and leave it at home. That's the easiest way to do it. Let's go ahead and get this back down and get Sophie back in here. All right. All right, and of course, this is Sophie's favorite configuration. We've got it folded down. We've got lots of room in here for her. Got her dog bed in here. Even got some of these cool straps from Rockworks in there to go across the quick release hardtop bolts that we've got in there. So that way we put a harness on her. She's got a seat belt, which she actually loved for off-roading. Mm -hmm. She liked having her harness on and her seat belt on to keep her from moving around. Stabilized her. Yes. So uh, so that's it. There's leveling off the back area. You still have the storage underneath here, even when the seats are down. So we are pretty thrilled with how it turned out. Yeah, we threw in a little comfy bed for Sophie. She um, hangs out really closer up to the front when we're off-roading with her harness and it's uh, it works out really well. Yeah, and we still had room to put some bags back here with her up front and with these uh, straps from Rockworks, you can kind of tie in your luggage, make sure that your luggage isn't gonna slide forward even when you're just traveling down the road. Makes it pretty versatile, definitely gives her better space here in the back. There's a wrap up, there's a final look at leveling off the back area of our two door without doing the rear seat delete. Your seats are still there. If you need to haul other people around, it's really just a couple of minutes to be able to flip those back up and make it happen. All right, hey, we hope you enjoyed it. Ready to go off-roading with your puppy dog? Ready to go <laughs> off-roading with Sophie. All right, 
Hey, until next time, we hope you're out in your own Bronco doing some of your own mods and keeping it bad, bad to, to the, the stone. stone. All right, we'll be here in the shop working on that next video for you. Till then, y'all take care. Bye.